fish. You'll be on YouTube. Movie star. There's one. I just buy the uh, meat. I don't buy the head. I'm going to weigh this one here. Big uh, GT. Yeah. Yeah, it's tell him he can take out the guts. He can take it out, yeah. Yeah. Here comes the next one. Just fine with that. They got a Pendawan here that's really big. Looks kind of like one. Yeah. Nice looking fish there. Scale and see how much that one is. Okay. That's that three and a half there. Okay, and then you can take out the gut now. You can take out the gut. You can, yeah. Oh, okay, it's gone. And oh, okay, both these. Put that one up, put that one. Huh? Lower the price. Uh, uh, 240. Huh? 240. 240? Yeah. 340. 240 for the for the Pendawan. 240? Huh? 240, like these. Yeah, it's, it's no better. It's the same fish. Huh? Huh? Less? 270? Yeah. Yeah. And that one, yeah. And that one, my friends. It's just delicious. Yeah, I know. I I, I catch them. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. The um. Smile. Uh, for the small one. The, the the small one. Yeah. 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 So. Um, Yeah. So big. Huh? Big. No big. This one too. Two pieces. Sir. Huh? Two pieces. Two. Oh. This one too. Buy. You want buy two pieces? I want to buy what? This one. Hold the long all. Take all. Take all. all. Well, I can't carry all. I have my mo motor cycle, okay, okay. so I, I don't know what I can carry. Well, I mean, I like that one. Yeah. Well, no, okay. I, I, I can just get one more. One and, more, okay. Yeah, because I can. Oh, okay. Okay, okay, give me the big one. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, we're getting a big Pendawan. 
or, or um, cobia. Yeah. The big uh, cobia we're going to get. What are you saying? Scale? No. Yeah. Yeah. We go big open that one. Got a lot of filleting to do tonight. <laughs> It'll be a couple hours. Big go, big go, open that one. Cobia, cobia for everybody in the U.S. and maybe elsewhere in the world. I don't know. Here it's called Pendawan. I'm guessing before cutting the head off, I'm guessing he's 25 kilos or something. Put him on the scale, yeah. We're gonna pick this up. I think they're gonna need two two scales. Yeah, just lay it up there. What do we got? We're gonna have this up. Okay. Yeah, and then you can take that out. Yeah. yeah. There's the head of that bad boy, that Pendowan or Cobia. Going to get 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 the guts out. I have no use for the guts. Yeah, they may sell the liver or something. I don't know if there's eggs in there or roe. Gizzard. <laughs> okay. okay, well, I gotta go get bags, yeah. And I'll be back. Bila? Huh? Huh? Okay. Okay, and the total? Total? Yeah. She's gonna get the total. There's some fish here. This is a big old like a knee little nose thing. Have those. Calculating. Check this out, my friend. Huh? 
Good friends with shit, Slacko. Hey, I've got bags. I got the bags, group. I have bags. I'll, I'll go get my bags. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Where? Where are your bags, Slacko? Where are your bags? Bike? Bucks, my bucks. You. Back. Oh, no. At, at my motorcycle over by the by the square. Yeah. So she's calculating it up anyway. So we're going to back these bad boys up and then we'll be back with more of my paradise on Bentayan Island. Bye for now. All right. If you want to know how we roll with all this fish, we carry our own bags. We got a lot of bags and stuff, so we load it up like this. We did all of our shopping too. So there's the uh, giant trevally. This is the uh, the tail of the uh, pendawan or cobia. Uh, they also call this other fish here mamza. And there's a rainbow runner in there too. And then we got our groceries, our chips and stuff. So and we got honey, ten bottles of honey in there. And then we got what do we got in here? Just fruit. Fruit and vegetables. vegetables can't really see good because it's dark outside, but anyway. So that's how we uh, load up and roll in the Philippines. So we'll be back with more from my paradise on Italian Island. Bye for now. Hey everybody, well, we made it home. Oh, uh, score, big fish score. So here's the, uh, I thought it was a rainbow runner, but I don't think it is. They've got a name for it here. And my friend that does spear fishing, he actually spear fishes and gets these over on uh, Negros over by Guimaras Island. Uh, but you can see the little silver dots on them, on them, or at least I think that you can. A really good fish. And then we got these uh, giant trevallis over here. And again, I'm getting them. I take that back. This is not giant trevally. This is uh, African pompanol. You see the point on the dorsal fin right here? You see how that points instead of going straight? When it goes straight like this, that's a giant trevally. When it's got this point, that's African pumping off. So we got one of the, well, two of those actually. I'm going to get them out of the bag and get them into the sink and then I can start getting over filleting all these guys. And there's the other one there. Look at that size of that thing. That's huge, huh? These are big boys. And then the biggest, here we'll put this outside. And, okay. Okay. And then the, the big daddy of them all this guy, this is a uh, cobia, or what they call here a pendawin. And he's about, I think he's about 50 pounds. This is a monster. You gotta watch out on their back, they've got these dorsal spikes, just like a stegosaurus dinosaur. And uh, you don't get stuck with those. But anyway, this guy here, yeah, see these spikes? This is, you see they got these spikes here? I don't know if you can see it. I'm just going to lay, lay it down, but yeah, they got these little spikes on their uh, back. It's, this is their dorsal fin here. So it's not their fin, but they've got additional little spikes here. And these guys will all actually hang out with sharks. They're not a shark. They don't even have teeth like a shark. They eat, you know, crabs. They just got normal fish teeth. Uh, but this guy here uh, checks in at about 50 pounds uh, with no head. You know, because I don't buy the head, but, you know, Phil Peen knows uh, like to eat the head. For some reason, they've got like a head, uh, a fish head thing, where they really like to, you know, to eat the fish heads. Uh, it's actually fish head soup. So, anyway, let me get this bag out of the way. And then uh, got fillet knives out. I'm using the uh, American Anglo knife. Of course, I'm not paid by them, but it's nice because it's got the serrated edge here that you can cut bones with. You know, the the rib bones and, 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 and stuff. And then it's got, you know, the other part for cutting. And then I use this one here. This is a little bit more dull. And it's a very flexible blade. It's actually a cheaper blade, but it's very flexible. And it's not quite as sharp as my uh, American Angler, but this is good for uh, getting the skin off. So when you do the fillet and get the skin off, that's what I use. And when I'm cutting the meat, I use this one here. 
So anyway, I got a lot of work to do. So I'm going to start in on these. And we will be here for <laughs> several hours filleting these big boys. And we'll be back with more. But my paradise, I'm going to pick up one of these, but I don't know which one to do. My paradise on Medallion Island. Bye for now. All right, one more thing we're going to do because I got so much fish to clean and these guys are sitting out. I'm stuffing a little plastic baggie ice in the Philippines. They use these and then the tube bags for ice. I'll stuff a bag of ice down in this guy uh, just to kind of keep him cold uh, while we're working on these other fish. So it's important that you keep your fish cold. As long as it's cold, it's going to taste fresh. Uh, and the minute it starts getting hot, uh, room temperature-ish, uh, you start getting... Uh, you know, less than that fresh, ideal flavor. So we're going to start on the uh, African Pompanol now. And uh, he's a little bit more of a challenge. That blue runner went pretty good, but he's got a lot of stomach meat all the way from right here all the way to here. So that's almost a foot of uh, rib bones that I have to work past it in, in that. And then they got these little bones down here all the way up here that yeah but that's a piece of cake you just slice down both both, both sides but uh, other than that we're gonna uh, go to town and uh, same exact step just come in here on this dorsal uh, fin and you can start on the bottom or the top I prefer the top it just I don't know that's just where I start and like that and once you get that little initial cut you just start following ribs and spine bone, uh, those little spine bones all the way to the spine. And uh, I don't know if people think filleting a fish is hard. I mean, the first one you're going to, you know, be definitely learning on. But after you do that, uh, first couple of fish, you'll be good to go once you uh, know how things feel. You know, because it's really by feel, because you can't see where that blade's at. You can just feel it. A little piece of meat there. But you can feel that tip slide down those ribs and rolling over the spine. Like here, I'm just rolling over the spine just to kind of get to the other half of the meat. And then... Uh, working on this side the exact same way until they kind of meet, north and south meet in the middle. So anyway, I'm going to finish this guy up and we'll be back with more from my paradise on the Cayenne Island. Bye for now. Hey everybody. Okay, well we got all of the other fish cleaned, all of the uh, African Pompanol and what I call the Rainbow Runner. And now we're going to start on this monster here. This is the uh, Pendawan. <laughs> it's huge. I mean, I think it weighs more than my wife. But uh, we've been keeping it on ice and stuff to keep it fresh. But this is how big this sucker is. And uh, we're going to have to, uh, I mean, I used to shark fish and we, you know, have sharks this big uh, or bigger. And we kind of slice them in cubes, I mean, in like bread, basically, and then skin them and then cut that into steaks. But I'm going to try to fillet this thing, uh, and then after that we'll cut steaks when it's, you know, completely deboned in that. I have no idea how thick this skin is uh, on the uh, African Pompanol, and that uh, is exactly pretty thick. But shark skin is really thick, too, but this is the knife I use to... Uh, uh, handle the sharks. So as you can see my cutting board, fillet board is not quite up for this job here. When I build my house I'm going to have an actual stainless steel table that I can use uh, of course outdoors uh, and see if I can uh, yeah see this is this stuff is tough but uh, well not that bad it's not that bad. And on sharks, you don't have any bones. Did it stop? No. 
You have a message. Oh, okay. I thought the camera stopped because it made a bing sound. But it just says I've got a message. So, okay. So, basically, it's the exact same thing. Just kind of come down where the fins are. And as far as I can tell, this guy doesn't have scales. Because I'm not seeing anything. It's just like, you know, like basically like shark skin. Uh, and again, I'm running this knife right down the, the spine bones here. And this fin leads into the spine bones. And uh, on the tunas, we would quarter them. Because you can't skin the meat off of something round because your blade is flat. So we would quarter them, and then that quarter would kind of lay out flat so that you could, you know, remove the skin. This thing here is going to be a little bit different. Uh, and this is all an experiment with a fish this size. Like I said, this thing's right, right at 50 pounds without the head. Uh, I can barely pick it up. And uh, so... Anyway, just kind of showing you how we're starting out. This is going to be quite a set job, so you probably don't want to watch uh, half an hour of me just uh, basically working it the same way. The same way as the smaller fish, work it down to the spine, uh, trim over the spine, over the curvature of the spine, going this way with the tip of the blade, and then uh, coming in from the belly side, working up. And then I come from down here once I've got both of these sides loose and then I just work it up and down the spine because the spine's got bumps uh, and you work it up and down the spine till you get to these ribs and then you use this blade here and saw through all the ribs and then you got your giant uh, fillet and when I get to that point I'll show you so I'll be back in just a minute bye for now all right we got <laughs> the half of this Pandawan, and it wasn't as hard as I thought. The skin, fortunately, wasn't too bad. I mean, it's still thick because it's just a huge fish. Uh, and the rest of it was just a little bit of work, but you can see it came out pretty clean there. I mean, there's a couple of pieces where the, the spine is so big. I mean, that's, that's like a deer spine there. It's so big. Uh, but basically, all I got to do now, I'm going to get these ribs out. There's a lot of belly meat. See that? That's why I want to work with that technique where I probably get one rib at a, a time and uh, remove it uh, if I can to save that huge piece of belly meat there. And uh, I was real fortunate on the African pompanol that we just did. For some reason, that one I just slid the blade down around the ribs and the whole thing came out perfect. The whole rib cage was still intact on the spine and it just looked like, you know, one of the skeletons you see at a museum. It, it worked perfectly. This one I think is going to be a little more difficult, number one, because of the size and number two, the thickness of these. Uh, if I do have to separate them from the uh, horizontal bones, which it may or may not have, uh, it may be a bit of a challenge. Yeah. Yeah, it's got bones here. See, going these bones that go vertically along the lateral line also connect to these the rib bones here. See, so here to here. So you have to cut all of these rib bones, separate them, and then you can get under them and maybe uh, work this uh, rib cage out. So I'm going to do that, and then we'll be back. And again, uh, my camera lady, my wife, uh, has to help me kind of hold things because I'm working with like smaller than ideal uh, like cutting board and that and uh, this is bigger than probably we've ever done here it is bigger than anything we, we've done maybe half this size is as big as we've done we've done jump and down one but they're like half this size maybe 20 pounds or 18 or 15 pounds 16 18 something like, like that this is a 50 pounder here without the head so it's a 60 plus pound uh, fish so anyway we'll trim out these ribs and we'll be back bye for now all right, I was able to uh, pretty easily uh, just work my way uh, down these ribs. There's still quite a bit of meat between the ribs. You can see that's a that's a quarter inch, almost quarter inch piece thick of meat. But that's what you get when you get these big uh, fish. So the ribs didn't go that far. They only went down to about here. 
So all this belly meat that you see, almost an inch thick or three quarters of an, an inch thick, that's all good stuff. And I was able to just kind of work it as I go like this, pulling the ribs out and just following them down. And now it's just time to just slice uh, these ribs off because they don't go all the way around to the bottom of the belly. They stop short of there and voila, there's your rib meat. Now, and again, in the Philippines, Philippine, you know as well, uh, I'll get all this little bloodline stuff off of here. Uh, they will throw that in soup, and that's just a huge piece of meat for them. I mean, I mean they eat fish that ain't even this big here. So just this little uh, rib meat thing, they're, uh, they're like really excited about our friends. Uh, you know, that's what they eat. It's just really small fish. And I, I don't know if it's because it's cheaper or they're easy to get or what, but yeah, they uh, that's what they eat. So anyway, I'll let them trim this off. But yeah, they got a nice little piece of meat for some fish soup. Uh, so the ribs are done. Uh, I'm going to uh, split it down the center now, basically, uh, down here. And again, we got all these bones here that I have to separate. In fact, I'll just start into that and kind of give you a little heads up as to what that is, is like. It's basically following the ribs exactly like I did here, getting these off. But you just, you, you know, I've got the, those uh, horizontal ribs going out over here on this left side of the, my knife. And I'm just following it down until we get to the uh, skin on the other side and then uh, trim it out. And then we'll have this quarter and this quarter. Then I'll uh, strip all the skin off. And uh, after that, we'll clean out that bloodline, get that out. And uh, then we'll have huge uh, cobia steaks or Pendawin, whatever you want to call it. Uh, here it's Pendawin, U.S. Cobia. So anyway, you basically saw what I, I did. I'll split the skin too. And like I said, we'll have two quarters. And then I'll, uh, and you gotta sharpen your knife like all the time here because this skin is so tough and kind of like a sandy kind of a texture. And uh, after uh, cleaning for 20 pound fish plus uh, time sharpening. I use this little sharpener I got at, uh, I don't know where I got it, maybe a sporting goods store, maybe uh, uh, Bass Pro Shops or someplace, maybe, maybe, or maybe at a grocery store, you know, at like uh, Safeway or, or uh, whatever. Maybe even Walmart grocery store has these. They're just in a look, they're hanging on the the uh, wall there where all your uh, kitchen, you know, spatulas and things are. And it's a great fillet knife sharpener, great kitchen knife sharpener. You basically just slide it down, it puts a really good edge on there, and then uh, away you go, like that. So anyway, we will be back with more from my paradise on the dining island. Having a ball filleting fish. Bye for now. All right, everybody, we got this uh, guy skin. You can see the bloodline here that we need to remove. Uh, but look at the size of that steak. Look at the size of that thing. It's huge. Just huge. But I also want to show you the thickness of that skin. Look at that. That's almost 3 sixteenths of an inch thick. And look at the outside of it. It looks like python skin. See with the markings and the greenness and all that? Looks like python skin, but it feels like it too. This stuff is just heavy. I, I mean, it's like... I mean, that's, that's, that's like... I'm doing like a bulletproof vest. So, anyway, when you're uh, filleting your Pendawin big boys like this, you better have a sharp knife because that is like cutting through cowhide or more. So, anyway, just want to show you guys that and kind of let you look at how the uh, markings and stuff look like a python once you get that uh, thing quartered pretty good. So, all right, I'm going to trim this uh, bloodline off of here. And uh, then we'll slice these into just some, just, I'm getting so hungry just trimming this thing and watching, looking how big these juicy steaks are. And the thing about the Pendawin, and even the last um, um, African Pompanol that I just did, um, 
the skin, it's, it's meat was so oily. It's just slippery oily and that's just so nice because that just makes a really moist uh, cut of meat whenever you uh, toss it on, on the grill. They just come out just, just really juicy and nice, de delicious. And that's that omega-3 oil, you know, that's good for your heart and stuff. So that's why you want to eat plenty of uh, fresh fish. The oilier, the better. Uh, I know mackerel is really oily, but it's got a real funky fish taste, if you ask me. Uh, but the lapu-lapu um, here is really an oily fish. And the uh, momo which is a uh, parrot fish. That's a really oily fish. Uh, and they're just, they taste so good. Momo is one of my favorite, if not my favorite fish. But you see, once you get that bloodline off of there, it's really just beautiful. Beautiful white meat. Look at that. Just gorgeous. So anyway, these things are just going to be so dang good, man, on the grill. I've got to figure out some good recipes. One of the problems we have here in the Philippines is that you can't get spices. You know, I don't think you can get Old Bay here. Not that I like Old Bay because I think it's got MSG and stuff in it. But if you just read the label and see what the spices that they put in it are and buy those spices without the MSG and whatever other, you know, chemicals they put in it, um, you got Old Bay that's, uh, you know, chemical free. So... That's what I always try to do. If there's a spice that everybody uses that tastes good, I just read the label. It's got like garlic and and uh, ginger and you know whatever other spices are, uh, and I just go buy those and uh, sprinkle them on my uh, meat and yeehaw! I've got the flavor without any of the downside. So anyway, you can see here I'm just getting all this uh, bloodline off. And look at how white that meat looks just fantastically delicious so I'm gonna finish uh, cleaning this up this is a little bit of uh, tedious work doesn't really take that long but still you know, you know basically you see what I'm, I'm doing I'm just shaving shaving this uh, red very thin bloodline type uh, stuff off here and this is the thick part here this is really part you want to get off here because this is uh, this is really nasty fish taste right here so you can see how heavy that piece is there that's just a big old chunk of nasty fish taste so okay I'll finish this up and we'll be back with more from my paradise on battalion island bye for now Alrighty, uh, what I'm doing, I've got kind of got part of this clean, but I, I need to uh, kind of section it off and then slide this back up on the board because it's much easier to work on this board. But what I'm doing, I'm cutting these into steaks. And as you can see right here, that's about an inch thick steak. And so you just slice this thing as thick as you want. Depend on your grill and how hot it cooks and, you know, how much doneness you want on it just slice them to that thickness and you may have to experiment once you uh, get, you know get your grill uh, working on a big fish like this but uh, basically that's it once we uh, once I cut these what what we do is a uh, guys tender now so tender I, I it, it'll just if I squeeze this it just mush it in, into it so tender uh, but we put it in this ice water here to keep it cool. Uh, see, I got a big chunk of ice there and uh, water, water. And then my wife will rinse it off, and then she'll put it over here in this one here, where uh, there's more ice in these bags and water. And it'll stay cold until she puts it into another bag. We don't have one of those uh, vacuum sealers. Actually, we do. It's 115 volt though, and this is 230 volt or 220. So she uh, puts it in that bag, squeezes all the air out, and ties it in a knot, and she writes on there a label. As you can see, here's one of the bags. We just buy these bags at the, uh, I call it the Chinese store, because it's some Chinese guy own, owns it, but it's the biggest store on Bentayan Island. They sell bags. So we just put, uh, this was for uh, AP, which is uh, African Pompano, but we've already, uh, filled them all up with those 
So the next one, she's going to label this one just as P for Pendawan. Pendawan. So anyway, just want to show you uh, how these things turn out, nice steaks. And uh, we'll be back with more from my paradise on Bentayan Island. Bye for now. All right, just want to show everybody, too, how we pack this uh, meat, you know, without the uh, uh, vacuum bags. So my wife is going to take a piece here that's, you know, already chilled and cleaned. And she just slides it into these bags like I showed you before. It's just a plastic bag that we buy at the Chinese market here. They're food-grade bags. And she basically just kind of packs it in there so everything fits neatly. Um, again, this is not a vacuum seal, but this is what she does here. And she's got a really good technique. She just kind of pushes all the air out and whatever extra water there might be, spins it around like this. That's a Filipino flip wrist twist knot there. And then she ties it up tight. And voila, you got a perfect. I mean, there ain't, well, there's a little bubble air there. But this will stay good in the fridge for months. I mean, we, you know, I mean, we just got basically 100 pounds of meat here. We got 50 pounds of, of uh, the uh, Rainbow Runner and the uh, African Pompanol. And now we got another 50 pounds of the uh, um, Pandawan or Cobia. And uh, so we're going to, you know, obviously we're not going to eat this next week. Uh, you know, roughly 60, 70, 80, 100 pounds of fish. So uh, that's, that's how we uh, keep it fresh. You freeze it. It works great. Uh, you can also, I know when I was in the U.S., we would uh, have Ziploc bags. And uh, to keep the fish fresh there, we would actually put them in water uh, in the Ziploc bag and uh and then zip lock them and you know without the air but the fish would be in the wash sure. and uh that would keep them from getting freezer burn like that you can keep them for a year or two i mean, I mean you can just about forever because they're uh encapsulated in water and freezer burn it happens whenever uh, the water uh, basically dehydrates from the meat because refrigeration and that uh, dehydrates, uh, removes all the moisture you know, out of the air. And if your bag leaks at all, it'll suck all the moisture out of all your meat and things you have frozen. So anyway, I got these all sliced up. Uh, I got another big old chunk of meat right here that we got to do. I got to clean this bloodline off here and then I slice it into uh, steaks for the grill. So anyway, still working. <laughs> it's been a couple hours. Also, this is one of the skins we got off of. Uh, I'll show you this. Again, it's like we skinned a python here. This thing is like this long down to there. So you can see this thing is huge. Uh, they do have pythons here. And if I ever catch one on my land in my uh, main lot, my big lot actually backs up to a mangrove swamp. And uh, there's baby pythons. I've seen several baby pythons, and we uh, uncovered a nest of hatched python eggs when we were uh, building our garden. My wife's going to start a new bag here. Uh, how do you show them the bag? See, it's just a plastic bag. It's just a food-grade bag. And again, they sell them at all the stores. Different sizes, small, medium, large. You know, they're different. They're like 5 inches by 12 inches and 3 inches by 8 inches. And you know, seven inches, you know, eight inches by, you know, 12, you know, just different sizes. So whatever size you think you need, uh, meal size basically is what we do. One or two of these makes a good meal, uh, you know, for us with a little bit of left over so we can, you know, eat them the next day or two without having to cook. So anyway, just want to show you how we uh, bag these and uh, keep them fresh and uh, just We've never had a problem with any uh, bagging of these fish like this, so we will be back with more. I'll trim this uh, bloodline off and stake these bad boys up, and we'll be back with more. I got another uh, half of the cobia waiting for me, and so I'm not done yet. Bye for now. <laughs>